previously on the last episode. What was that? <laughs> nah, it's probably nothing. Hello everybody, it's Ezio Monte 117 here, and today... Where's that sound coming from? Hi. Ah, ah, what, what the... Who the hell are you? I'm your review for today. Wait a second, you said review? Hmm, interesting. Fly by night. By... <gasps> Brush? I review anything if it's Rush, because, you know, they're awesome. You've, you've only reviewed one album, so how can you say that? I've listened to all the albums before, you dingus. Then why are you reviewing me if you've listened to me before? Because I'm doing a series where I'm doing albums, okay? And, I'm, and this time I'm doing Rush albums, so shut up, okay? Don't need to make it fit. Uh, so yeah guys, today we're going to review the second album by Rush called, if you didn't already know, Fly By Night. For many Rush fans, they they thought the first album was way too Led Zeppelin and, uh, and way too familiar. And in some respects I could agree, check out my first review if you haven't. But if it's one thing, when the second album came out, Everyone went nuts. They f they thought, oh boy, they're gonna make a good career out of this. Like, they liked the sound, they liked the drumming, they liked the guitar work, they liked that there were less similarities to other bands. And, well, they're pretty much right, honestly. Someone who thought the first album was good, but kinda lame at the same time, I thought the second album was a massive improvement. And why is it a massive improvement? Two words. Neil Peart. For those who don't know, John Rutsey, who played the drums in the first album, he had suffered from diabetes and he couldn't continue playing with the band. So the band had to try and find a replacement drummer, and then came Neil Peart. When Neil Peart came into the band, everything got changed. His rhyming style was way more mature, his drumming style was way more aggressive than John Rutsey's, and you could see that he puts a lot of work into when he is writing his lyrics, of course. And when he's uh, giving the lyrics to the band members, they have to try their best to make these lyrics sound as epic as possible. Like they weren't before, but way more epic. And the result was fan-fucking-tastic. So without further ado, let's take a look at the album. Shall we? Like I said earlier, because of Neil Peart, the writing got way more mature than the last album. And the first song on the album, Anthem, shows exactly that. The first song is basically just about following your dreams and forget about the, uh, like the society or government telling you to not follow your dreams. So basically you're saying, just think about yourself and nothing about everyone else, because they're losers. And basically, the best part of this song, in my opinion, in terms of the writing, is that the only reason this song exists is because Neil Peart was selfish about the, about the entire thing. And honestly, it well, to be a funny ending. That he just, he just wrote the entire lyrics just because he really didn't like how, peop how people got treated. And he, and he was just like, you know what, let's just write this song about how you can just believe in yourself and forget the others. Like he was like being really angry at those who disagree. And that and, and that's why the song exists, because he was selfish. Honestly, I, I kind of like that the song is like that. A lot of people might be turned off by the fact that the song is being self-aware, but I actually find myself find that pretty funny. The other songs in the album are really well written too. Best I Can is about a guy who has to show that even though he may not be the best person of all time at something he likes, he has to try his best to really get good at what he's at, which explains 
explains this part of the song. He said that I ain't got no class. Well, let's see who's laughing last. Which means that he is going to get better over time. And like I said, the lyrics in that song are way more mature than the entirety of the first album, which I felt was a bit too heavy on the sex and loving and not much on actual good writing, which made the first album a bit of a bore, but Fly By Night knows what it's doing with its lyrics, and Best I Can isn't a bad example. Beneath Between Behind focuses on US's history, and yeah, and they do that also pretty well. Instead of focusing on all the good stuff that has happened in the US, like George Washington becoming president and all the natives being being civilized, it also and while it does focus on the good stuff that has happened in the US, they also focus on the stuff that sucks about the US. And really, I think it's a really bold song. We by bold as, as in it, that Neil Peart has the balls to talk about how crap America is, but at the same time talk about how great it is. It shows that even a Canadian can still have some free spirit about America. And that, also, and what, and that is also what makes it, once again, a really well written song. But the song that stands out from all the other songs on the album is By Tor and the Snow Dog. It's still focusing on someone or s politics or something that has happened in society. Instead, it focuses on fantasy. And what kind of fantasy does it focus on? It tries to be like a battle you see in Lord of the Rings, where it's one group versus another. Except this time, it's only two people. And the way they uh, do this concept of good versus evil is really interesting, and also pretty funny. For those who don't know, Bytor and Snowlight was inspired by a story that a roadie of Neil Peart told the members. Where the roadie met one of the managers of the record company that uh, Rush are uh, with, uh, called uh, Ray Daniels, where he uh, we had two dogs, one was a German Shepherd and the other was uh, a white dog, I think. And basically, the German Shepherd growled at uh, the roadie, while the other dog tried to jump on. And that is basically how the story came into being. It, and, that's a, and yeah, that's uh, how, how it happened. So the band members just started calling the dogs Bytor the Snow Dog. With Bytor just being Bytor, but except different because of the Canadian accent, and Snow Dog because of the other dog because of the white color it has. And as like I said, the song itself is basically just about the King of Darkness, or Prince of Darkness, called Bytor fighting against a very nice snow dog. And basically, they're, that's what the song is about. It's just about them fighting over who is going to take over the land. And uh, yeah, it's, it's about as straightforward as it can get, but it's really unique for the band since they've never written fantasy lyrics until now. And just you wait, it gets way better with the later albums. Fly By Night is, is about a guy wanting to change his life by going to a different location. Because the location he is at now is rather boring. There's not much to say in this song lyrically, but I think it's good as it is. Making Memories follows a similar theme to Fly By Night, as in it follows of a guy who wants to live his life or make his life a lot better than it was before. Well, with Fly By Night, it was, a, it was a lot more negative because the main character never had a good life to begin with and actually wants to make the life, his new life a lot better. Making Memories is a lot more positive as in the life the main character has was good, but he wants to make it better by reliving the, the stuff he liked back in the day all over again. Which explains the title, Making Memories, which means doing the, me doing the stuff you remembered before, your memories, and doing that again, like I said earlier. I think, this is a, I think this is a fun song to listen to and digest. I wouldn't say it's as good as the rest of the album, but I would say it's a lot better than Fly By Night because of its positive vibe. Huh, another fantasy song. Rivendell, if you didn't already know, is about Lord of the Rings, and it focuses on the location from the book, Rivendell. This song basically just talks about how it is living in Rivendell, 
and how comfortable it is there compared to other locations in Middle Earth. And I mean, it's a nice little song, and it's a and whoa, the tempo of the song is a lot slower, and it isn't as fast-paced as the other songs. I will talk about the other songs musically later. I do think lyrically that it's a nice song, but nothing spectacular in my opinion, since I don't, since I'm not the biggest fan of Lord of the Rings. But I think it, it gives you a nice visualization of how Rivendell could be like if you were actually there. Now we're at the last song on the album, In The End. From all the other songs, this is the one I don't have much to talk about, since the song is basically just about a guy who is with a girl, and seeing that the girl has a lot more advantages than he does. Like for example, she can smile better at him, she has, she is better at the thing that he likes better than he does. It's basically just showing that his girlfriend is just amazing. That's kind of it actually. I mean, there's not much to this song in terms of lyrics, and that's why I think this song lyrically is one of the weaker on the album. It's not bad, it's just not as good. One thing is certain about the lyrics is that they're way better than the first album. It's way more mature, has, it's way more clever, and they took more risks with this one because, you know, so many ideas they brought to the table would not work without the amazing chemistry these three people had. And I like that they vary a bit as well, as in not every song is written by Neil Peart. Good examples are Best I Can and In The End, where these two songs are written by Gay Lee. And like I said, I think that's an I think that's a nice uh, I think that's a nice change, you know, because we it would be kind of boring if every song was written by Neil. And like I said, those songs that are written by Getty are pretty good too. You can also see that Gay Lee has uh, improved a lot in his writing than the last time because yeah, like I said, it was just basically just about loving and fun and then finding a girl you like and sex and that's kind of what he wrote. But here, he actually cares about society. And you should thank Neil for that. So like I said, the lyrics in this album are pretty good. Not the best I have uh, seen, at least from their catalog, catalog, but I really like what I'm uh, reading. So how is the album musically? Well, I can say that it's really strong with the first four songs. FMS is really driving guitar riff, the drums are insane, and the vocals really complement the aggressive tone the song has. And as you can see, when you, when you hear the song, Giddy Lee sounds a lot more aggressive than he did in the first album. Best I Can is a lot is a lot more Led Zeppelin influenced than uh, Anthem, but it still tries to be its own thing, and I like the song for that. Beneath Between Behind is also another hard rocking song with some with, a, with some really good drum work in the chorus. You just 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 listen to this. <laughs> Snow Dog starts off really strong in the first four minutes, but then after that it just drags, honestly. Sorry to those who uh, really adore the song, but I like the song lyrically, and I do think it's a good song, but the first four minutes are so good, but I just feel like the last four minutes are just overwhelming. Or underwhelming. Why is that exactly? That's because after the four minute mark, we hear two minutes of just ambient no ambient noises because uh, in the story Blytor gets killed and we have to wait two minutes for him to wake up even though he could have just woken up when he had the chance because he was not really dead but so the entire thing of it being two minutes was kind of a bit pointless or just there for build up and the, and the last few minutes is basically just the first verse again with different lyrics and as I said, it's not bad but I do, I do feel a bit underwhelmed because the first four minutes were just so good and I also kind of like that, uh, Barton the Snow Dog, w in the song, is Gady Lee and, uh, Alex. Alex is basically, uh, the Snow Dog, and Gady Lee is Bytor, which explains the weird sounds that they make, where Snow Dog is the guitar and Bytor is the bass. I don't, I don't really like the growling sounds in the, uh, in in the first half, but it's not too much of a distraction in the live versions though, which I definitely recommend you checking out. 
And then it's the last four songs, and musically, they're not as energetic or as good as the first four songs, but I would say that the first two tracks are really good. Fly By Night is, a, is really happy in terms of the tone and a lot more pop, but I still think it still sounds like Rush, you know? Like, it doesn't sound like they're trying to be someone else or whatever. They're still doing their own sound, so Fly By Night, I can tolerate. Make, making Memories is definitely the most distinctive uh, sounding uh, song in terms of the really snappy, you know, songs in the album. Because the entire song is ba basically just uses the acoustic. No electric guitars, no much heavy drumming. It's just a simple 4x4 four, four four, four time signature and, and, mid and medium tempo done to this really, uh, really happy sounding acoustic. It's not bad, honestly. And I, and, I, and I really like the sound. But, uh, or, Rivendell is definitely the slowest and most tedious on the album because the song never changes. It's just the same, it's just the same acoustic guitar riffs, the same verses, it's, it's the same chorus, and since the song is five minutes, it, it gets boring. It's a nice song to sleep to, but I'm not sure if I would listen to this song if I decide to go to uh, listen to this album uh, on my phone or record. So I usually skip this song. In the end, is also another song I don't think is musically that interesting, but I think the guitar riff and the uh, and the energy that has like it increases the energy just a bit, not much, but just a bit is what kind of makes this song a lot more musically interesting than something like Rivendell. So in the end... What do I think of this album? It's really, really good. Like I said earlier, someone who thought the first album was just okay, this album is just incredibly good. The lyrics, the songwriting, the improved structure, the drumming, the guitar work, the bass work, just nearly everything about this album is really good. There's a few issues like like Rivendell structure and some and some of the lyrics, but they're nothing too major that it ruins the entire album completely. So do I recommend this album? Fuck yes. There, I reviewed you. Can you go now? Uh, 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 sure thing. Oh.